Good morning. Good morning. Good morning and welcome. Glad to see you all here for worship in person as well as joining on our live stream. If this is one of your first times worshiping with us, we're glad that you're here. Your presence helps us experience God's family in a fuller way. If you're looking to get connected into this community, I invite you to fill out our Connect card. There is a QR code on the front inside cover of our bulletin, or you can find it on our website. And that is a way for you to connect with us so that we can reach out and connect with you, hear a little bit about your story, share a bit about St. Anne's, and see how our lives can intertwine in this time and space. Let's take a moment to center ourselves, take a deep breath, you did it. You made it to church. Allow the other things to melt away. Kids are in Sunday school or hanging out in the chapel. Deepen your awareness of God's presence with you, within you, around us. Come, Holy Spirit, you are welcome here and fill our space, fill our atmosphere with your presence. Draw to the forefront of your mind the things that are the deepest yearning of your heart that you want to offer to God today. Allow a deep gratitude to well up within you for the gift of this opportunity to gather in community and worship, the gift of scripture, of song, of prayer, of praise, of sacrament. Come, let us worship. Bless the Lord who forgiveth all our sins. His mercy forever. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins to God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us confess our sins to God. We confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. 
We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you alone can bring into order the unruly wills and affections of sinners. Grant to your people grace to love what you command and desire what you promise, that among the swift and varied changes of the world, our hearts may surely there be fixed where true joys are to be found. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Our first lesson is from the book of Ezekiel. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out of the, by the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me all around them. There were very many lying in the valley, and they were very, very dry. He said to me, Mortal, can these bones live? I answered, O Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones, and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you, and you will cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live. And you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded, and as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling, and the bones came together bone to its bone. I looked, and there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy, mortal, and say to the breath, thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. I prophesied as he commanded me. And the breath came into them, and they lived, and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. Then he said to me, Mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say that their bones are dried up, and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you back to the land of Israel, and you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people. 
I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you on your own soil. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. Hear what the Spirit says to God's people. Thanks be to God. Please join in now as we read from Psalm 130, responsibly. Out of the depths have I called to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears consider well the voice of my supplication. If you, Lord, For there is forgiveness with you, therefore you shall be feared. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits for him, in his word is my hope. My soul waits for the Lord, more than watchmen for the morning, more than watchmen for the morning. O Israel, wait for the Lord, for with the Lord there is mercy. With him there is plenteous redemption, and he shall redeem Israel from all of their sins. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Mary was the one anointed with the, the Lord with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was ill. So the sister sent a message to Jesus, Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, 
This illness does not lead to death. Rather, it is for God's glory, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Accordingly, though Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, after her having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to the disciples, Let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the religious leaders were just now trying to stone you, and you are going there again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours of daylight? And those who walk during the day do not stumble, because they see the light of this world. But those who walk at night stumble, because the light is not in them. After saying this, he told them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to awaken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he's fallen asleep, he will be all right. Jesus, however, had been speaking about his death, but they thought he was referring merely to sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. For your sake, I am glad that I was not there so that you may believe, but let us go to him. Thomas, who was called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, Let us also go, that we may die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away, and many of the religious authorities had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him. While Mary stayed at home, Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live, and everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord. I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. When she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary and told her privately, The teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, she got up quickly and went to him. Now, Jesus had not yet come to the village, but was still off in the place where Martha had met him. The religious authorities who were with her in the house, consoling her, saw Mary get up quickly and go out. They followed her because they thought she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came to where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the authorities who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the religious authorities said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the man, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there has been a stench because he has been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, did I not tell you that if you believe, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me. But I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth, his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, 
unbind him and let him go. Many of the religious authorities, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what Jesus did, believed in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Lord, help me to proclaim your praise. Amen. Amen. We have arrived at the fifth and last Sunday of Lent. Our scripture focuses on what might be considered the key message of our Christian faith. God shows us this week that we can dare to believe and we can trust that God's love is stronger than death. The power of life does not ever die in such a way that God cannot revive in glory. Do you dare to believe and trust that Jesus is the resurrection and the life? I don't know if you picked up an epiphany star word on January 6th. I don't know if you remember when Jess handed around the basket and we all grabbed our little stars, or online, you were able to grab them online. Um, I did, and I got this word, F-E-A-R-L-E-S-S. The way it was written on my little red wooden star, I couldn't tell whether it said fearless or fearless. Mm -hmm. And I thought, why am I given this word for this year? And I actually think it was partly for today. If I truly believe and trust God's love is stronger than death, I should fear less. And I should be fearless as I preach this most important message today. Our Old Testament reading today focused on God's relationship with Ezekiel and with Israel. Our gospel reading from John focuses on God's relationship with Jesus, Jesus' relationship with his beloved friends, Lazarus, Martha, and Mary, and Jesus' relationship with his disciples and the Jewish community. In Ezekiel, the Lord says to him, these bones are the whole house of Israel They say, our bones are dried up and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. And the Lord commands Ezekiel to prophesy to them. And he does, and the Lord brings them back to life. The Lord tells Ezekiel, if he does as he asks, then he shall know that the Lord has spoken and will act. In the 11th chapter of John, we hear how Jesus raises Lazarus. Chapter 11 is the center of the Gospel of John. 10 chapters before and 10 chapters after, it serves as a hinge between what we call the Book of Signs and the Book of Glory. The first half of John is the descent of the Word into the world. Life and light are mentioned 82 times in the first 10 chapters and only six times in the last 10. Jesus comes into the world, raises Lazarus, and in the last 10 chapters, turns to go to the Father. It is also the hinge where Jesus transitions from public ministry to ministering to his disciples. In today's scripture, 
we see three climactic moments. First, we see an emotional and relational climax for Jesus. When Mary came to Jesus, knelt at his feet and wept, Jesus was greatly disturbed in spirit. Some translations note that the original Greek describing this emotion included an element of anger or indignation. I wondered if he was angry with God for telling him to wait two more days, or was he angry at the power of death? Jesus was also deeply moved. The same verb for this emotion is used again when Jesus' soul is troubled at the arrival of his hour in chapter 12, in chapter 13 to describe Jesus' spirit as he announces that he will be betrayed by one of his own, and in chapter 14 when he tells the disciples not to lose their hearts or be troubled at his departure. Even the one who is himself the resurrection and the life is deeply unsettled by human grief and death. He deeply felt very human emotions. The second climax is Jesus' self-revelation. We hear Jesus' fifth I am statement. I am the resurrection and the life. This I am points backward and forward It's a reflection on the theme of life and foreshadowing of Jesus' own resurrection on the horizon. The third climax is a climax of a confession of belief. Martha's reply when Jesus asked her if she believed is the Christological confession that serves as the key to John's entire narrative. Martha declared, yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah the Son of God, the one coming into the world. And Martha's confession of faith is in the very middle of chapter 11, and it's truly the heart of the matter. And it's precisely the purpose of the entire gospel as expressed later in chapter 20, verse 31, which says, but these are written so that you may continue to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. Again, like the woman at the well, we have a woman, Martha, making this key confession of faith. These climaxes serve to initiate a pivot in the plot. This miracle at the tomb of Lazarus is Jesus' last and seventh sign in a series that began with turning water into wine. The talk of glory begins to amp up here. Glory is mentioned only three times in the first 10 chapters of John's Gospel, and it's mentioned five times in this chapter alone, and six in the next. Let's take a moment and enter into this story together and wonder how each person might be feeling and experiencing God's presence through Jesus. Martha and Mary are distressed that Jesus arrived four days after Lazarus died At that time, people believed that a person's spirit stayed with his or her body for three days then departed. So Lazarus was really dead. The disciples followed Jesus back towards Judea, knowing that people were after him, willing to die alongside him. Martha confesses her faith that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. Mary weeps at Jesus' feet. And the crowds who followed Mary wept too. And Jesus wept. What a powerful moment of sadness. Imagine being there when Jesus commanded the stone to be rolled away. And when he prayed aloud to God, thanking God for always hearing him. Imagine your reaction when he commanded Lazarus to come out. And imagine being part of the community, helping to unbind Lazarus, to let him go. In our Wednesday Lenten study, we explored art that depicted the community unbinding Lazarus. Imagine reaching out to help remove the linen bindings. 
And imagine what Lazarus must have thought and felt and his sisters. Who do you most relate to? The scripture ends with many who were there believing in Jesus. Yet it's key to realize that in the next chapter, there were those who went and reported to the Pharisees, sealing their commitment to kill Jesus. It is the raising of Lazarus to life that incites the plot to kill Jesus in this gospel. And they plan to kill Lazarus too, since it was on account of him that many in the community were deserting and were believing in Jesus. It is Jesus' very claim, I am the resurrection and the life, that provokes his death. And what happened to this family who lived in Bethany, Martha, Mary, and Lazarus? In John's narrative, they appear again at the opening of the next chapter, where they give a dinner for Jesus, at which Martha serves, Lazarus is alive, and at the table with Jesus. Mary anoints Jesus' feet with costly perfume and wipes them with her hair in an act of extravagant love, which Jesus identifies as preparation for his burial. Through our scriptures, God shows us this week that we can dare to believe, and we can trust that God's love is stronger than death. The power of life does not ever die in such a way that God cannot revive in glory. How can we live out our faith in Jesus as the resurrection and the life today? How can we live into daring to believe and trusting that God's love is stronger than death? How can we understand our radical Christian belief? One glimpse of understanding could be through books written by and about people with near-death experiences. I read Heaven is for Real by Todd Burpa with Lynn Vincent. Has anyone read that book? It tells the experience of a four-year-old boy, Colton, who heard angels sing, sat on Jesus' lap, and told his parents what they were doing in two separate rooms while he was in surgery and almost died. Don't we all want to understand what it's like when we or a loved one dies? Another way could be when we've lost a loved one to this life and yet we feel them with us even when we can no longer see them. Another way is proclaiming our faith when we're facing suffering, not looking beyond suffering and death, but right at suffering and death. My son, Nathan, plays French horn at the McLean High School Symphonic Band. They just won top prize at Orlando, Florida. Woo-hoo. And um, one of the songs they were playing is called Stages. It was written by a musician, amazing musician, when he received a phone call from a fellow musician, teacher, and she said, I have stage four cancer. I want you to write a song for me about my journey. And he did. And when she started going downhill, he sped up the process. And they were able to play that song for her. Six days later, she died. That's called facing suffering and death. Surely she had the belief that God's love is stronger than death. Yet another way is through memories and actions of someone living on for years after they've died. One person who died who made an unexpectedly big impact on me lately is Fred Rogers, more commonly known as Mr. Rogers. He died in 2003 from stomach cancer, and yet he is still making an impact today, 20 years later. I highly recommend watching the 2018 documentary, Won't You Be My Neighbor. Have you seen it? Wow. I didn't realize that Mr. Rogers was a priest. He doesn't wear a collar. He wears a sweater. 
but he saw TV as a way to reach and minister to young children. He wanted to provide wholesome programming to balance that less kind TV programming that was coming about. Some of my favorite parts were watching him engage with a room full of diverse little children who clearly loved him. And when he was hanging out with Coco the gorilla, Coco felt Mr. Rogers' love, and he said he loved him back in his own sign language. And when Jeff Erlinger, an extraordinary little boy in a wheelchair with profound disabilities, appeared on the show, Mr. Rogers spoke so lovingly to him. His consistent message was, I like you just the way you are. I liked hearing from his wife that, after, that he asked after reading Revelation when he was very ill, am I a sheep or a goat? <laughs> and she reassured him, if anyone is a sheep, you are. <laughs> Fred Rogers focused on unconditional positive regard for everyone he met and reminded all who watched the show that each of us are inherently worthy, just the way we are. He was love embodied and he's still living today through his impactful TV show. And with his faith, he surely believed and trusted that God's love is stronger than death. The power of life does not ever die in such a way that God cannot revive in glory. As we reflect on today's readings, the good news is that God's love is stronger than death. Ezekiel listened to God, prophesied as God asked, and God made the bones of Israel live again. Martha, Mary, the disciples, the community, and Lazarus all listened to Jesus, did as he asked, and Lazarus lived again. We all need to listen to God, believe and trust God's love, and that the power of life does not ever die in such a way that God cannot revive in glory. As we end our worship today on this last Sunday of Lent, we too pivot and turn towards Jesus' passion on Palm Sunday and towards Holy Week, towards Jesus' suffering, death, and glorious resurrection on Easter Day. And hopefully we all fear less as we rest and trust in God's love. It is indeed stronger than death. And with faith and listening to our triune God, doing as he asks, we can live fearlessly with the assurance of everlasting life. Standing as you're able, let us join together in our affirmation of faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead 
and the life of the world to come. Amen. Brothers and sisters, the Spirit of God dwells in you. Let us appeal to our God, saying, We call to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our voice. Breathe new life into your church, O Lord. Where our bones are dried up, where our hope is lost, cause your life-giving breath to enter. Give us confidence in the truth that that same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in us. We call to you, O Lord. Hear our voice. Many are they who wait for you, O Lord. Speak into the souls of those suffering throughout the world a word of hope. We call to you, O Lord. Hear our voice. Creating God, it is the wind of your spirit that sweeps across this planet. Renew and refresh your creation. Bring forth newness in dead places. We call to you, O Lord. Hear our voice. With you, O Lord, there is plenteous redemption. Restore the hope of this city. Renew our trust that you have a life-giving future in mind for us. We call to you, O Lord. Hear our voice. With you, O Lord, there is mercy. Consider well the voice of those who call out from their depths. As they wait for you in their pain and sorrow, give life to their mortal bodies by your healing spirit. We pray especially for Jamie, Bruce and Jean, Al, Gerald, Nancy, Barry, Sue, Marianne, Rich, Eleanor, Catherine, Andrew, Joseph, Pat, Claudia, Nora, Lori, Marianne, Jill, Kathy, Tim, Brenda, and Bill. We call to you, O Lord. Hear our voice. God, we trust your Son, Jesus, to be for us resurrection and life. We remember especially the Reverend Canon Anna Matthews, who died last week. Give to the dead your life. Assure the living with the promise of resurrection. We call to you, O Lord. Hear our voice. Almighty and ever-living God, ruler of all things in heaven and on earth, hear our prayers for this parish family. Strengthen the faithful, arouse the careless, restore the penitent. Grant us all things necessary for our common life, and bring us all to be of one heart and mind within your holy church, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated as we welcome the children in. Thank you. Good morning. Welcome. Come on in. Find a spot. <laughs> Excellent. Look at all these creations. Your shoe fell off. My goodness. Take off your shoes. You're on holy ground. All right. We got more. Oh. Yep. You're good. Find a spot. Any spot. <laughs> Maybe Grace will go first. We'll get the girls first, and we'll shift to the guys, and then our olders. <laughs> All right, wait your turn, wait your turn. I'll get Juliana. Hello, hello. Excellent. <laughs> Wrapping around. Grace, would you like to start us off? Are these the faces of Easter? Do you all need to stand up together to show them all together? Yeah, come on up. If you have one of these faces of Easter, go ahead and turn around and share. Can you share? Let's see. Is, it, is this the right way? Yeah, there we go. There we go. Can you like to share what you talked about or what this picture is? 
It's the first week. The first face of Easter? Excellent. And do you want to phone a friend? Chris, what, what is this image that we're looking at for this first one? Remember, Grace, who's in, the, who's in the image that you're holding? The Holy what? Family. The Holy Family. Excellent. All right, Julia. Yes, do you want to hold the microphone? Or Yeah, that's fine. Do you want me to hold this for you? Yeah. Okay, sweetheart. Um, this is when the um, Jesus was in the desert. Oh, excellent. The and, second face, yes. And he was um, running out of food, and then he heard a voice that said, turn a rock into bread. Yes. And did he do that? No. No, he didn't do that. <laughs> That's right. Great job. Anything else you wanted to share there? I want to share my picture. Sure. You want to share your picture? Yep. This is when Jesus was 12. Oh. And he was in a temple. Yes. And what was he doing in that temple? He was talking. Mm -hmm. um, I, I forgot what they're called. Was he teaching in the temple? No. He no. Was, he was talking. He was talking. Um, I forgot. <laughs> Rabbi. Ra Rabbi. It's a fancy word for teacher. Yeah. Excellent. That's great. That was like some intense teaching. All right. Thank you, Juliet. Can you hold this? All right, Liana, what image do you have? Um, that, um, this is was of the fifth story. Um, and um, that, um, that, um, um. The fifth story. Excellent. And what's going on in, on this? You want to phone a friend? Is this eyes and mud? Is this the healing of the blind man? No. Yeah. No. <laughs> that, um, that, um, I think that, um, yeah, it's okay. Go ahead. You can say that. Um, that, um, that, um, he's saying his thumbs on um, a land, a uh, um, uh, land, a uh, man's eyes, and then uh, he's, um, Helping um, um, the blinded man. Yeah, he helped him to be able to see. You're right. Thank you so much. Were there any other faces here? Okay, there weren't any more images. Okay, okay. We've got the three to share and show out. And what are the last two? Do you guys remember? Do you remember the last two? Go ahead. Shout it out. Um, that, um, that was, that was the only one because she was Oh, okay. That, um. So we got the Holy Family, the Temptation in the Wilderness, Jesus Healing the Blind Man. Remember, John? Do you want to phone a friend, Juliet? The river. Oh, with water? Oh, um, that, um, that, um, that was this, um, guy asking, um, Jesus to um, baptize him, but um, he, um, but um, Jesus was the um, guy to baptize um, um, him. Um. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. Juliet, you want to elaborate? Great. So there was a guy asking <laughs> for Jesus to baptize him. Do you remember his name? John. John was asked. Getting Jesus to baptize him, but but that's not what the thing said. It said for John to baptize Jesus. Yeah, that's right. Excellent. So Jesus baptized him, and and when he got out on the water, out of the water, the townspeople said they they saw a dove go, um, coming down from heaven, giving him the Holy Spirit. Excellent. Thank you so much, Juliet. So when John baptized Jesus, there was a dove. This is great. All right, young class, what did you all learn? Pressure's too much. <laughs> Come on up, bud. Ooh, what do we got here? So we we had the that that that, that Jesus 
uh, ride a donkey and everyone would with pom poms and and then and and then and then everyone had had a palm tree. And yeah. They, and, and they and they and they waved them. They waved the palms around when Jesus entered. Is this your palm? Yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing. Did you want to add anything? Yep, come on up. Ooh, I like your colorful palms. We'll swap. I learned about palm trees, but palm trees leaves are actually like this. Oh, palm trees leaves are actually, they actually look like this? That is so cool. Yeah. I did not know that. Hmm. And I, draw I like your palm picture. tree. I draw a picture. Yeah, I draw totally. Side. See? Yes, I see it. I was letting them see it. Is, is it supposed to go like this? Or I thought it was like that. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. It's supposed to be like that. It's supposed to be like that. Is this a palm tree? Excellent. I see the little coconuts too. And Jesus, yes. He rode a, a he ride a donkey. He rode a donkey into Jerusalem. Yeah. Did they wave the palms around? Yeah. Ooh, do you want to do that next week? Yeah. We're gonna hand out palms, and you get to wave them around. They're not as colorful. Maybe if you bring your markers, you can make yours look like these. They're a little bit more greenish brownish. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have any donkeys though. Yeah, come next week. I will. Yeah, we all get to wave our palms around. All right. Older class, who would like to share? Wow, ooh, all right, we got three takers. You got it, tell us what you did. This looks really cool. Um, today we learned, to, we basically heard the story about how Jesus got crucified. Okay, yes. Um, and we made like little garden crosses and we put on um, we got to decorate it, and we wrote what we want to pray for, and I just put all the good stuff because I don't want one specific thing. There's a lot, and I am too lazy to write at all. That's great. You're going to pray for all the good stuff. I love it. Excellent. Yep, come on up. Which one do you want to show? Okay. A cool maze. We made a maze for that says, this is my body, this is my blood. Um, it's what Jesus said on the cross. Oh, that's great. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right, I saw another hand over here. Any last takers? Cat. cat. <laughs> Sometimes you just gotta say cat. I like how you colored the cross. All right, can all of our young people stand up onto the chancel steps and the congregation please stand as well? Would you like to lead us in the peace? Oh. May the peace be with you. And also with you. Thank you so much. Peace be with you all. Peace be with you. Peace be with you live stream. Peace be with you family chapel. Peace be with you choir. Thank you, DJ. Peace. <laughs>
We will have palms to distribute and bless and wave around um, to sing all glory, laud, and honor uh, to really kick off the whole week with such beautiful praise. And then we do a hard pivot, talking about pivots, um, into the passion narrative, which we got a little bit of Jesus dying on the cross from our older children today. And so it is Palm and Passion Sunday, and we will close that service next week with no dismissal. We, we depart in silence, and it's as though we continue our prayerful journey all throughout Holy Week, um, throughout the Triduum. And so please, if you can, turn to the back outside cover of your bulletin, and that has the whole lineup for Holy Week services. On Monday, Thursday, we'll have our 615 Agape meal. We're excited to bring that back after a hiatus for a few years. And then our 730 Monday, Thursday service with foot washing, stripping of the altar, communion. Um, and please know that all of those things are do what you feel comfortable. So if you can only make it to the Agape feast, that's okay. If you can only make it to the service, that's okay. If you don't wanna get your foot washed, that's all right. Um, come for whatever part is going to be nourishing and meaningful for you during the journey of Holy Week, whichever uh, is able to work into your schedule that will nourish you. On Good Friday, we'll have a noon service and a 7.30 service. Um, both of those, you will hear John's reading of the Passion Narrative uh, and our beautiful colics, solemn colics. And then on Saturday, Easter Vigil at 7.30, if you've never been to an Easter Vigil service before, mark your calendars, come. It's, dare I say fun? I don't know, I guess the liturgy geek in me wants to say fun. Um, it's dramatic, it's, uh, uh, it's got all the things. We start outside as the sun is going down with lighting a big bonfire and we light the new light. We come into the church darkened like an empty tomb. We hear the beautiful exalted sung. We hear um, the stories of God's salvation to be heard. We'll have the choirs doing this beautiful piece with Genesis, as I'm just so excited about, um, that will allow the light to just permeate throughout the space. And then eventually we'll turn on all the lights and we'll say our fancy Lenten A word or Easter A word that we're not allowed to say during Lent. Um, and, and it just, it really feels like Easter. You get all the drama in it. So please mark your calendar, not this Saturday, but next Saturday, 7.30. And then of course, Easter Sunday, we'll have our eight and 10 o'clock services. And then for some, the most important part is the egg hunt after the 10 o'clock service. So lots of fun things to be engaged with. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and prepare for over, um, not this week, but the following. We do want to share a little bit about our ch evolving children's choir that is just starting to get off the ground. Hi, I'm Karen and this is Lydia, and we've been working with DJ, the music director, to form a children's choir. Um, the first meeting will be after this service. The children can go and get a snack and then come meet in the choir area and um, hopefully we can get things started. All children are welcome, so please stay afterwards if you'd like to join us. Excellent. Any age minimum? All children, all children are required us. Excellent, thank you so much, Karen. I really appreciate it. All right, let us, actually, let us just give Nancy some appreciation for that fantastic sermon. <laughs> Really fantastic. I so appreciate the time, the energy, the exegesis that went into it, the storytelling. I loved the four days thing tied in with our Wednesday conversation. We were trying to figure out that significance, so it's just oh, really spot on. And, and yes, God's love is greater than death. Oh, it's like an Easter sermon already. I love it. Let us all walk in love, in God's love. Um, for Jesus Christ gave himself up for us, an offering to God.
Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You bid your faithful people cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast, that fervent in prayer and works of mercy and renewed by your word and sacraments, they may come to the fullness of grace which you have prepared for those who love you. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night in which he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. When he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us each in the language of our hearts, we are bold to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen.
are the gifts of God for you, the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Continuing with our post-communion prayer, let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with the spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us bow down our hearts before the Lord. Look down in mercy, O Lord, on your people who kneel their souls before you, and grant that those whom you have nourished by word and sacraments may bring forth fruit worthy of repentance through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Worship has ended. Our service begins. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.